Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we have one topic from uh, pre-prosthetic surgery that is alveoloplasty along with uh, we have alveolectomy. I just kept it in order to differentiate the two similar terminologies. So last session we finished one topic from pre-prosthetic surgery that was uh, maxillary tori and mandibular tori. So this uh, topics uh, that is the pre-prosthetic surgery will be taken part by part so I don't want to take it in a single uh, lengthier session so pre-prosthetic surgery as we all know it is carried out to reform or redesign the soft or hard tissues by eliminating the biological hindrances to receive a comfortable and stable processes so in order to receive a processes that is a stable and a comfortable one we need to perform some procedure in the heart or soft tissues that is a redesigning and reforming it's nothing but pre-prosthetic surgery so what are the basic aims of pre-prosthetic surgery that is to provide adequate uh, bony support for the new denture or uh, similarly the soft tissue support optimal uh, vestibular depth elimination of uh, any bony deformities like tori uh, prominent mylohyoid ridge or genial tubercle or even to correct the maxillary and mandibular ridge relationship but uh, what are the characteristics of an ideal denture base so we are doing all these to create an ideal danger base so an ideal danger base should have adequate bone support then there should be good soft tissue uh, coverage there should not be uh, any undercuts there should not be any sharp uh, ridges there should be adequate sulcus depth uh, there should be a proper maxillary or maxillo mandibular relationship that is arch relationship there should not be any soft tissue folds or uh, there should not be any muscle fibers which mobilizes processes so we need to create all these with the help of pre-prosthetic surgery so we are directly uh, jumping to alveolar plastic basically this pre-prosthetic surgeries are like uh, alveolar ridge correction ridge extension and ridge augmentation so that will be a lengthier session so today i'll be dealing about only alveolar plastic this comes under alveolar ridge correction so alveolar ridge correction so also we have procedures like extension and augmentation so moving on alveoloplasty before that we need to learn what is alveolectomy 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 is nothing but ectomy is indicating removal okay so removal of alveolar bone so if it is ostectomy it is a removal of bone so this is alveolectomy so it is a removal of alveolar bone so uh, basic procedure is like uh, after extraction uh, whenever there is presence of any sharp margins at interdental uh, or interseptal or labiobuccal uh, alveolar crest uh, they should be uh, trimmed with bone rancher or uh, round burr and smoothened with a bone file so it will be cut basically but whereas the alveoloplasty is a different procedure it is uh, defined as surgical recontouring okay it is not removal it is recontouring the alveolar process so this procedure is done with the purpose to take care of bony projections uh, or sharp crystal bone or undercuts so conservation is a key factor 
in the procedure unlike our alveolectomy where the removal is happening so alveolar plasty we have uh, three types so alveolar plasty uh, the first one is simple alveolar plasty simple one i just mention it as a then inter septal alveolar plasty it can be further divided as dean's alveolar plasty or obvexus modification and last one is post extraction alveolar plasty so the simple alveolar plasty simple alveolar plasty as the bone areas uh, which requires recontouring should be exposed using a flap uh, basically a envelope type of flap then a incision is given uh, a muco periosteal incision along the crest of the ridge with adequate anterior posterior extension then with proper visualization uh, sometimes we give a vertical incision so with good visualization we do the alveolar plastic procedure using a uh, rancher sorry bone file or using a bone bar with a uh, hand piece so bone bar in the hand piece so this uh, procedure should be uh, uh, performed with copious saline irrigation uh, in order to avoid overheating and bone necrosis so there will be chances of uh, overheating and ultimately it results to necrosis so in order to avoid that we need to provide saline irrigation so continuous saline irrigation during the procedure is essential so after this the edges of the flap are trimmed and then sutured with continuous or non continuous sutures uh, whereas the second one that is uh, dean's interseptal uh, alveolar plasty that is the second one uh, which is done uh, only on maxillary anterior region to reduce gross maxillary overjet so mostly done immediately after the extraction of anterior teeth okay so this one interseptal it is done on maxillary anterior teeth so this technique is uh, best used in area where the ridge is of relative regular contour and adequate height but there is a undercut to the depth of the labial vestibule so in those cases uh, we can perform the interseptal alveolar plasty uh, we are talking about sorry i forgot to mention dean's uh, interseptal alveolar plasty so the advantages are the labial prominence is reduced without reducing the height of the ridge the periosteal attachment to the bone can be maintained uh, here by reducing the bone resorption so the all the muscle attachments are left uh, undisturbed but the problem is there will be decrease in ridge thickness ridge thickness will be reduced that is a disadvantage of dean's interseptal alveolar plasty so the basic procedure is after this anterior teeth extraction interseptal bone is cut uh, with a burr from canine to canine region uh, with the same burr vertical cuts are made only in the labial cortex at distal end of the canine extraction socket bilaterally without perforation of the labial mucosa now labial cortex is fractured with periosteal elevator and compressed into palatal direction in approximation with a palatal plate so we are crushing this uh, labial plate that is the labial cortex and towards the lingual or the palatal plate after removing any sharp margins uh, we do the suturing the second 
modification that is uh, obvexus modification uh, in this the uh, both the label and palatal cortex are repositioned so this is done when the anterior object is too gross that cannot be reduced just by label plate repositioning so in that case we need to perform both labial and lingual repositioning so procedure is almost same as Dean's alveoloplasty but the only addition is that the palatal plate in this technique the palatal plate is fractured to at its base and repositioned with labial plate in palatal direction so that is the difference between these two so that was all about alveoloplasty so alveoloplasty is almost like a creek contouring alveolectomy is bone cutting or bone removal so alveoloplasty we have three techniques one is a simple alveoloplasty interceptal alveoloplasty post extraction alveoloplasty that we haven't mentioned post extraction alveoloplasty is same uh, procedure after the extraction we do the uh, contouring of uh, the margins of the alveolar socket so in interceptal we have deans and obvixes uh, types so in deans only the palatal uh, cortex sorry the buccal cortex is crushed uh, in this technique we have both labial and lingual cortex so that was all about alveolar plasty uh, it's commonly asked short note so i'll come up with a new topic in oral and maxillofacial surgery thank you